welcome back to Victoria's Living Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Nakia Young, and we are continuing our discussion with the lovely Miss J. Yes. So yes. let's get into it. I got to put my little blue light blockers on. And now I want us to talk about just how to move forward. Because by now you guys are listening to her testimony and you're going, I can relate to so much that she's saying. I yes. want to know what spiritual tools, what natural tools you have been using to deal with this, I would call it a tsunami of tragic events. Cause you were going through this divorce in 2020 as the world around us was falling apart. It's just like, okay, divorce, pandemic, George Floyd riots. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter was in her senior year of high school, having a whole Mm -hmm. breakdown of like, I can't even go to school my senior year. So that Mm -hmm. trauma you know, um, like you said, the riot, like rioting and Mm -hmm. it was nuts. And then, uh, for me also, I was working full time at a church, like I said before, Mm -hmm. um, and we pivoted from work, from meeting and gathering physically to online. And we were considered essential, Mm -hmm. um, as church workers. And so I was still, I was working probably more during the pandemic than I worked period. Like, and honestly, if you were in ministry, you know that you, like I was working probably about 60 hour weeks anyway. Yeah. Um, because you, you work, but then you have to go to every service too. And you're on, you're at work at service too. So, um, but during the pandemic, we, we pivoted to everything digital because I was the creative and worship pastor. Like I had to create content. We were basically on a digital revival online. Mm-hmm. So I was exhausted I was um, emotionally drained, felt so much betrayal. um, And because the church was so concerned with making sure that we had content that compared with the other churches online, because so many people were church hopping digitally during the pandemic that um, they they still are. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they were yeah. more concerned about that than they were about my spiritual well-being. Yikes. Um, and I was dying. And so I had to quit that, quit working at that church, even though it was my primary salary. And one thing I don't really talk about much is that my ex actually took my car and forged my signature to get a new car before he left me. So he left me with no car. And at the time, because I was working at the church, the church had vehicles that I was driving. But when I quit the church, I didn't have a car. So then I had to try to, during the pandemic, get a car. It was just- Oh my so, God. Guys, and that's another thing when we talked about before we went on break about things I would tolerate and won't tolerate. I will not tolerate putting everything in my name ever again. And I did that mm. off of love and because I knew him. Um, I, like, And I knew he was building his credit up. And I knew I had great credit that um, I put everything in my name in, but when he was able to leave that, when he left our divorce, he left me with everything, the house, the cars, everything other than the one he forged my signature for. So it's just a lot of things that I've changed and grown mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'll never do that again, you know? <laughs> but some of the things that helped me were things that I didn't even think would help me. Um, I really expected the church to speak up more, but because the church is so uncomfortable with divorce in the church, infidelity in the church, that the church was silent. The church was quiet because the church didn't want to look like they were picking sides. They left me to fight for this by myself. And I've seen it so many times with women, um, especially. Excuse the background noise. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, that's fine. That's fine. I know that baby is is up. (laughs) And so, um, like, I see it in the church too often where the pastor or the preacher has an affair and the wife just has to fade in the distance because people don't, people want to keep liking the sermons and liking mm-hmm. the posts and acting like nothing's happening when the woman is trying to put her pieces of her life back together. So I yeah. went the route of a lot of therapy because like yeah. I said earlier, a big part of what I wanted to do, because I didn't want to come out of this bitter and I didn't yeah. want to come out of this. I wanted to be able to get into another relationship and be happy about it. Um, but I needed to, I knew I needed to heal from some of my childhood trauma. And so, um, and not just childhood trauma, but trauma, even from the marriage and, you know, the, the friendship, cause you have, you lost a friend too. I lost two friends because keep in mind that the woman he was having the affair with was a friend of mine. And, you know, and so I lost the betrayal of a friend and my best friend, you know? So it's like, 
that was traumatic for me. So I went through a lot of therapy. I had a Christian counselor that could always speak word over me, but I also had a regular one that if I didn't want to always say the, the churchy words, I could say whatever I really need to feel because I did what I didn't want to do is go through this the Christian way so mm-hmm. that I can look good to other people. Yeah. Like I I just I want it when you're in a situation like that and you feel so muzzled, like and you feel like you have no one. Yeah. I just wanted to be healed by whatever means necessary. And I, it wasn't pretty. It yeah. was not pretty. There were times where I was just snotting and crying. I thought about hurting myself. Like I, I just wanted wow. life to end. I wanted it to end because wow. um, I was so hurt and so distraught by it. So um, even to the point where I made a decision because I couldn't sleep without crying. I was miserable. My, my thoughts in my mind, and I prayed that God would give me blank sleep because I was dreaming so much. I didn't want to see anymore. Wow. God didn't tell me anymore. Like, I don't, I was mad at God that I even told like my therapist, I was like, I think I need to be tested for depression. I ended up being classified as depressed and I went on depression meds because I needed something to regulate my hormones. I was out mm-hmm. of whack. I was, and then with me having a hysterectomy, like my, my hormones were imbalanced. So I started getting vitamin infusions. Like there are things like that where chemically, like as women, we have to keep those things in mind. So yeah. I had to go on like estrogen and things like that to balance my hormones because they were so out of whack with the trauma on top mm-hmm. of me being 40 and like, you know, like really yeah. trying to, my body was, my body went through like, like it felt like an 18 wheeler hit me, <laughs> you know? So I had to do whatever it took to help me, you know, get, get through this. So most people want to hear me say that I went to all these church groups. No, it was COVID. I didn't want COVID. I didn't want nobody nasty germs. Mm-hmm. And I didn't trust the church because these people that he, the person he had an affair with was, was at the church. And so I, I, really, oh, God. I didn't want nothing to do with no church stuff. Nothing. And so um, me and God were beefing. Cause I felt like God was silent. Um, I felt like he was silent. I think I felt like he could have, he could have warned me. I felt like he could have stopped it. So me, we were beefing. Me and God were mm-hmm. beefing. Um, yeah. But one thing I did not let go of was, like I said, Christian counseling, um, but also I kept the group with Joyce. Like I kept a good group of women that love the Lord, but mm-hmm. that also were balanced enough to just be like, what do you want to do? Do you want to burn your dress? Yes, I do. I just don't <laughs> want, don't say anything about Jesus to me right now. I just want to burn my dress. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, I just want, so you have to have friends in your life that are balanced, you yeah. know, that can be human with you and, and, and like go to a restaurant, have a girl's night, but then also if you need to pray, be able to take you in the bathroom and pray, you know, Mm -hmm. like both. And so that's one thing that I kept that around. Another thing is I found people to to help. I found people and not when I say help, not help in the traditional way that I've usually done it, but telling my story while Mm -hmm. I was going through it, was something I felt found out helped people so much because yeah. people I wanted to always want to tell their testimony after. After. Like after and God they, is good. Everything is fine. Man, <laughs> and now I got a new car. And now, <laughs> I even told Joyce that. I said, Joyce, you always like to tell your stories after they didn't happen. Like, <laughs> what are you going through right now? Yeah. Tell the folks you're having cataract surgery. You know, like, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm like, and how do you feel about that right now? Yeah. Because it, what it did was make, because there were so few people that really talk about how they feel in the moment. Yeah. It made me feel like I was this terrible person for mm-hmm. wanting to- For just, feeling normal feelings. Yeah. Where I wanted to, I saw it in movies. I want to slash a tire. Like I want to bust a window. I didn't, yeah. but I wanted to. And I'm like, where are people that can make me know, like help me to know that this is normal to feel it in this moment. So talking Mm -hmm. through the podcast has definitely helped me. Counseling has helped me. Good Christian friends have helped me. Um, My prayer life was different, has been extremely different. A lot of times it's me not saying anything and allowing God Mm -hmm. to talk to me. It's more like meditating. Mm -hmm. Um, When I did use words, my thoughts were everywhere and jumbled and I didn't really want to talk to God that much. So I used an app called Trello which is really a project management tool. But um, I had to organize my prayers because when I would talk to God, it, everything was just like, and why could, how could you <laughs> and feel like that? Listen, it'd be so like I, that. So I had to organize my prayers and I put enemies, you know, things I'm mm-hmm. thankful for, things that love God to, to help me with, scriptures, 
but I did, like I said, enemies. I had to pray for them. I had to list their names out. I had a yeah. whole had a whole column with their name. So I had to get real organized with my prayers. Um, That's a good tip. Yeah. yeah I, I need to, to jot that down. That's a good yeah, one. I, I had to. I had to get <laughs> organized with my prayers because my prayer time ended up sounding the exact same every time. Yeah. Um, because I was so hurt. But I knew afterwards, I'd be like, I know I had other stuff to say. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. You think you know my heart, but I wanted to feel more satisfied and gratified with my prayer. Like it was productive. <laughs> yeah. And I want, and so I then, so then I got comfortable pulling up my computer, opening up or opening up my the app on my phone and like scrolling through and honestly putting on the whole arm of God. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have to I put that on. You know, I had early morning prayers and evening prayers um, that I organized. Trello had helped me with a lot of that. It really did. It helped me to pray for our country. I was able to still pay. I feel good about that because I was still able to pray for the pandemic, the, you know, mm-hmm. the world. I was able to pray for the things that I know um, were on God's heart, too, and not make my prayers so selfish, you know, and it yeah. made me feel back like myself again, because I didn't always pray about myself like that until I went through this trauma. So that helped me be more organized. I wrote prayer. I wrote scriptures out and sometimes I would put them in my shoes so I could literally (laughs) be standing on the word. Like that sounds crazy. Okay. No, it doesn't. That makes a lot of sense. I had to do anything that, that could keep me feeling like I was saved. Cause I was like, I don't feel like I'm saved. (laughs) (laughs) Things I'm thinking. So I had to like. I'm having homicidal thoughts. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. I'm feeling like my dear, you know, like I want to bust his head to the white beat, Jesus. I unfollow anybody that I saw but like any of his stuff. I'm like, block, block, block. <laughs> that is real, girl. I'm like, oh, so y'all still liking his post and y'all know he cheated on me? Like, girl, like, so Ooh, I had to yeah. like disconnect for a little bit and then like do things like I had post-it notes all over my mirrors, like tell, affirming myself. So mm-hmm. like affirmations, I had to say like, you are, you are beautiful. Like that, that affair was not because you're ugly, That it's not yeah. because you're a bad wife. You're a great mom. You're a great person. You're great. You know, I had to remind myself, I had to write those out when I would feel those good moments, write them out then. Yeah. Because when I felt bad, I'm like, mm. so I would stick post notes on my laptop. I would stick post notes on every mirror, every window, just so I could like see it around the place. So those are some practical things that I did but putting on that whole armor every morning mm-hmm. was very it was something I did intentionally I did it for me and my daughter um while especially while and I try to do it every day but yeah. like especially while we were going through that season of d- the divorce part mm-hmm. I had to do that intentionally and I'm so glad you talked about that because when you go through a breakup or just any failed relationship it could be a friendship or anything there's a message that gets communicated to you. And that person may never say it verbally, but just the fact that at one point they vowed to be there for you and then all of a sudden they switched up, it sends a message to you. Yes. And it's like loud, it's screaming at you, like somebody is shouting this message at you with a bullhorn. Yes. And if you don't combat the message or messages, because there's several messages that those kinds of experiences send to you. And if you don't counteract, if you don't talk back to the enemy when he's talking to you, yeah. through those messages, you'll internalize them. It's like, easy. To do. It's you're very gonna, easy to do. You're going to automatically do that. Like, yeah. Just telling you, like, because everybody used to say, because I remember saying things like, I didn't want to go to church or go into certain social events because I'm like, I'm embarrassed. Like, Mm. I'm embarrassed to go. And people, my girlfriends were like, girl, don't be embarrassed. You didn't do that. He did that. I'm embarrassed that he wasn't committed to me. Like, how how Mm. can him cheating on me not embarrass me? Like, I don't understand. Like, yeah, he the one that should be held with his head head hung low, hung low because he's the one who committed the adultery. However, yeah. I was committed on, and so it made yeah. me feel like I was ugly, like I wasn't worthy, like I wasn't enough. Like mm-hmm. it took me back to the trauma of being in that bathroom the night of our wedding and not knowing what to do sexually. Well, maybe he wasn't pleased sexually. Like mm-hmm. maybe I could have done better with that. Maybe you know all you go through. Yeah. All of the things, every flashback over the course of the relationship 
of like moments where you were insecure, those are the times when it comes up the most. And so yeah. you have to be intentional with understanding that you have now, even though every day, but like, especially when you go through like a breakup or something like a, a, a death in the family, any kind of huge trauma, yeah, you know, um, understand that it's a war zone. It's it a is. battlefield and you have to dress appropriately spiritually because Satan's coming for your mind, for your heart, especially your mind. And that's why Joyce wrote that book, Battlefield of the Mind, because yes. it's in your mind. It's your thoughts. It's just thinking, thinking, and it, he attacks those every day. And so I had to be intentional with putting that on. And um, because I knew there was a strategy, there were like board meetings in the spirit realm trying to attack me and my family. And, and then, and honestly, I know they celebrated when he actually committed the affair. I know the, 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 the darkness team was like yeah, celebrating mm -hmm. because I know this, that God told me this. That's one reason why I wasn't allowed to like file for divorce. God wouldn't allow me to. Mm -hmm. He told me, even though you're in your rights, within your rights to file, I will not let you. Mm. How because you don't want the blood of this on your hands. You don't wow. want the blood of this on your hands. He said, because what I had planned for you guys was going to affect so many people mm. in such a positive way. But because yeah. he because he's clearly canceled that and killed that dream and killed that plan. I'm going to make, I'm going to turn this around for your good. And you still have a huge, beautiful plan ahead. Mm -hmm. But what I, that blood of that slaughter of your union has got to be on his hands completely. So, um, Ooh, it, that is deep. Ain't that deep? Mm -hmm. Like he showed me that he showed me like the blood on his hands. He's like, you don't want anything to do with that. Now, y'all, don't come write me talking about some, well, that's, she tried to say women can't file for, she didn't say that. She said say that's that. what God told oh, her. Oh, no, because I still <laughs> had the papers pulled up. Don't y'all even, don't, girl, <laughs> if you, know people I didn't did help a lot, since all of this, I didn't help a lot of my friends break up. Girl, you better file. If did God <laughs> tell you not to? Okay, no, I'm living vicariously through you then. Go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> like, you want me, what you want me, you want me to go to the courts with you? What you want me to do? You know, girl. Like, I am no, I am definitely not saying that. And if you're in an abusive situation, get out. If you're in yeah. something that somebody is treating you emotionally, um, abusing you or physically abusing you or cheating on you and all that narcissistic abuse, mm -hmm. get out. Like if you can get out, I ain't saying that, but I'm telling you what God told me, what yeah. he told me, because he already saw on the other side that mm -hmm. my ex was already planning to, to, to step out. He knew it was going to happen quick. That did not happen. It wasn't a long drawn out time. It all happened so quickly. The moment I found out from a dream, I confronted him on it. He denied it. God confirmed it. I had proof and it was, I showed him he left and then wow. he filed. So it's like, it was so quick. Um, yeah. It's so unbelievable <laughs> that, um, yeah, he didn't leave me. Now, if it would have gone too long, me and God would have been, been like, now I'm going to have to go ahead and dis disobey you, God. Cause uh, <laughs> you have to think you like no fool now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, he he did that, and I was mad at God for that too. Yeah, I was mad. Mm -hmm. like, I don't even get to have my moments to 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 serve Him. You know, I want to be able to be like, take my power back. You mm -hmm. know, then I didn't even. I had to have a divorce via Zoom. Like, <laughs> oh God, I didn't even think about that because the pandemic is still going on. I didn't oh, even Lord. wear no fur coat with the sunglasses. I wanted to look like Cookie Line going. In <laughs> to look snatched so it's make him regret ever hurting me i look. didn't even get that but y'all i still put on a whole show via zoom i had shades on and everything all black i was like it's a funeral and i was like <laughs> the whole video the whole zoom i'm like Rock. girl you are funny and i know i love the extraness because that would have totally been me we hear no, extra. Look, what is your enneagram because i just feel a kindredness <laughs> I, can't even remember. I think is it a nine what is it I don't even know off the top of my head. I don't even know. I got to look back at the, te the test that I took. But yes, girl, I was extra. When I tell you I was girl. extra, I sat there and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I had the tissues on deck. Oh he cheated God. on me, judge, your honor, with my friend, baby. Now let's clarify something with that too. So the person he's married to now is, is not your friend or is? No. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I just had to laugh at the <laughs> That was a good little petty Wendy Williams moment. How you doing, friend? No. Not you stole my whole husband. And then he left it up for somebody else. He ended up, sorry, he ended up um uh, cheating on her with someone else that he found on Instagram and now they married. Girl. Okay. So that's don't be, yeah, I had to clear that up. <laughs> no, it's not the same person. But she wanted to marry him. She told everybody he they were engaged. Wow. The original girl. Yeah. Who was so she divorced her husband. Oh, and, right, because she was married too. Oh. Yeah. It's a it was a big mess. Wow. Was, I felt like I was watching something. Like I didn't feel like I was the person in it. I was like, what is this foolishness? So don't ever get too secure in your situation and, and too uh, mm-hmm. bold where you and, and bougie. And my relationship is so this. You better pray over that relationship every single day. That's you real. better not feel like you so fine that nobody won't ever uh, won't ever cheat on you. Like, cause Satan is so sneaky, and the person yeah. and they always go down. They always like go a level down you know so it's not like i'm so fine yeah you are so fine but that that's not what it is it's a spiritual attack so be smart about it and pray over your relationship don't get so caught up in doing ministry that you don't cover your own such your own situation your own family i was covering my family but i could have done even more because i knew that the calling on our lives was so great yeah i could have been even more intentional with it but don't get too comfortable now Keep yourself looking spruce. And I ain't saying try to keep your man, but it goes same for the man too. Like y'all take care of y'all. Cause I, I've heard of plenty of, since I've ta- told people about this story, so many men and women have come out to me to say that my spouse cheated on me. Like, so it's wow. happening on both sides. Yeah. But a lot of them, a lot of us always talk about how we let ourselves go. And it's not our fault. It's not your fault that someone cheats and has a wandering eye, but we can do things as far as prayer spiritually, but also mm-hmm. physically like take care of yourself, keep yourself looking good, smelling good and feeling good for yourself yeah. because that self-confidence means more than anything. And it trans, it translates in your confidence, even in your marriage. So girl, it's a girl, whole I got to ask you one last question. Cause I don't want to keep you all day, oh. but when we, when most of us have traumatic breakups or whatever, and we do the divorce, boop, 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 it's over. We get to move on with our lives. This is a little different because you all still have a child together. So how have you been navigating that? Because it's not like you can just never speak to him again. You guys have to communicate at some point for things regarding your daughter, even though, you know, she's in college and she's grown. But no, we have to no even getting her to college. Like, I, but I still had to file as a single parent, which something I never thought I would have to do Mm. was like get my daughter enrolled in school as a single parent, like. No, I do not like him. I love him for the sake of, of Jesus, but that's it. I don't like him. So like, I still don't. I'm still Girl. healing. I don't care. He like, since you, because he likes to say, since you so healed. I'm like, who said I was healed? I'm not, honey. I am still Like, you can still catch these hands now. <laughs> you can like, stay far, far away, okay? Stay <laughs> away because I'm still human. Like, yeah. if you used to flip tables when he was mad, I can show so yeah. like yeah things came up even with the the his new wife wanting to come to my daughter getting moved in the ca- and on campus I'm like she didn't have anything to do with her life I don't want her to be there when I'm there if she wants to come with you then we got to stagger our time like I do not yeah. I I don't like that man it's not amicable like you can't for anybody out here that's like going through a divorce or something like that if you want it to be amicable on the other side make sure that you start it amicably like yeah. you can't because you want to sweep things under a rug and act like it didn't happen. And you want to put in your mind that this was an amicable situation yeah. to make yourself feel better. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. work that way. You have to actually repent for what you've done. You have to actually own what you've done for the person to just let it go and work well with you. Now yeah. we work together in some regards, but for a long time I had him blocked. I have nothing to say to him. Like, because primarily I was too focused on trying to heal and fix my life and get reestablished that I didn't want to talk to him. He tried to destroy me. And in a lot of ways, he did destroy that old version of me, you know? And so hopefully I'll get to a place where I can be cool with him. I don't know. But right Mm -hmm. now, I don't ever want to be his friend. I don't ever want to go to dinner with him. I I don't speak negatively to him about... I mean, to my daughter, 
you know, um, but she's old enough that she sees things on her own, you yeah. know, but I don't, I don't have an interest in pretending like a lot of church folks do. Oh yeah. We're this. <laughs> no, stay away from me, sir. So, <laughs> Don't text me. Don't call me. No, you're blocked on all of my social media. No, you need to let him see your glow up. No, then because I might accidentally see his and I'm not interested. Like, you know, so I'm just, I'm not interested. Yeah. And so I, to protect my peace, I stay far, far away. That's real. That's, and I'm glad you said that. And this is why I wanted to have these real conversations because I don't want people to feel that's going through this, that they have to have a pristine churchy reaction to everything. No. It's, I mean, if you're having real raw human emotions, you don't need to, a lot of times when people do narcissistic stuff, they feel like they have a, um, like they get to dictate to you how your response should be. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then I'm not saying like he did this. I'm just like in general. Oh, he, I've but he did do that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a textbook narcissism handbook. And I don't know what's worse, narcissist or Christian narcissist, because then they'll try to make you feel like you aren't being a good Christian if you don't talk to me, like if you don't talk to me or you don't, whatever they want you to do, then you didn't forgive. And you can forgive people and never speak to them again. Exactly. You can. Exactly. I think the Christian narcissist is way more toxic. Yeah. They're able to lace scripture into their narcissism. Yeah. Well, they need they to try to justify their narcissism and to try to make you speed up your healing process when no person is going to speed up my healing process because I'm still triggered daily. Now, am I triggered the same way that I'm triggered that I was triggered a year ago? No, but yeah, like I am still triggered by things and I'm not going to lie because God knows my heart already. And he knows that I don't want to be triggered anymore. And, and I'm doing the work to not be triggered anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like a narcissist that's a Christian wants to say, you know, that you're supposed to love and you da 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 and you have to do this and da 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 and like, mm -hmm. like God, what does God feel about this? My God is just fine with me. Me and my yeah. God talk. I just got finished talking to him and he said, you're doing good, girl. You know, so like, yeah. that's you have your own personal relationship so that you're not puppeted by people's narcissism or uh, spiritual bypassing because that's yeah. a big thing where you try to bypass things with um, Christian rhetoric, just, just all kinds of things. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's a real thing. So guard your hearts daily and, and don't feel like you have to um, be a certain way. Cause everybody's going to grieve differently. Now that's that didn't true. give me an excuse to do anything crazy. Cause I did not do anything crazy. Even though I feel like I would have been a little justified. I'm I proud of you. Cause I don't I think I would have made it. Window. <laughs> I haven't slashed a tire. I haven't punched anybody, even though you want some more little tea real quick. The original girl actually tried to file a, a restraining order on me. She got scared. Ain't that crazy how you do something to me and you get scared? I ain't, Now, listen, Nikia, I have never had a fight in my life, but because she was so paranoid for what she had done to me, she was scared and filed a restraining order on me. And the judge threw it out because I never, I've never attacked this woman. So it's like, it's just, do you see how like, and it How you gonna to, try to be out here taking people man and be scary? <laughs> you better wear your big big girl draws and and really do the thing if you're gonna do the thing. Right. But got scared. Got completely scared and tried to buy one of them. And I wasn't even thinking about her. I haven't I haven't seen her. I don't look her up. And that's another thing. I block anything to do with the situation because yeah. I noticed anytime I saw anything that reflected or reminded me of it it triggered me in a negative way and made me sad for the rest of the day so yeah. I didn't want to see her social I don't want to see her ex-husbands I don't want to see anybody that's connected to her even though they were my friends if you're still friends with her I'm actually blocking you too no shade no hard feelings I'm protecting my peace at all costs because I know I'm about to snap yeah <laughs> so that's that kind of stuff I'm about to snap because I always used to say you mess with my man my my baby or my money it's over for you. And, yeah. and this person really did mess with all of that. And so, um, so I, I mean, I, I felt like I was about to snap, so I had to protect my peace. So this doesn't give you a license to go crazy on people, mm -hmm. um, but it does give you permission to feel whatever you feel, but do whatever you need to do to maintain peace. 
It makes a lot of sense. So what is you, girl? First of all, thank you for this because you are helping so many people. And I want to talk about that as our last wrap up. Like, what is Jay doing now? Because I saw that you became a John Maxwell coach. And so you are helping people in multiple ways. Tell us about that and some other things that you're up to. Yes, like we've mentioned before, I am the co-host of the Talk It Out podcast and on Enjoying Everyday Life for Joyce Meyer. So I talk about my life and my day-to-day and my mm-hmm. spiritual journey, the whole thing on the podcast. But I also uh, do some creative production for John Maxwell and I'm okay. certified as a um, speaker and, and leadership coach through John Maxwell. So I go around and coach, uh, train, one-on-one coaching, but mostly it's more focused towards leadership coaching. Yeah. Um, to build the leadership inside side of you but I do do some life coaching as well but yeah I'm helping people as much as possible I'm writing a book currently I'm writing yes. a new album okay um, I'm helping other people write albums so seriously like it, pouring back out and sharing my story in creative ways mm-hmm. is um, something that and, and and trying to find the the <laughs> the light at the end of the tunnel to, yes. to the hope at the end of it even though it's a mess you know um is, is my goal right now yeah Well, I'm excited about all of that. And please tell everyone how they can connect with you, how they can find out more about what you're doing. And y'all got to follow her on social media (laughs) because one, she's hilarious. And two, she will bless you. If you love this discussion, you will love her post as well. But go ahead. Thank you. Please follow me on social media. Um, I change my social handles all the time, but right now it's uh, on Instagram. That's the primary one that you can find me on is on Instagram. It's at J Talks. So J-A-I-T-A-L-K-S um, at J Talks. And if you click on the link, you'll be able to connect with me on all the other social media platforms. So there's a link free link on there. Just Mm. follow me on that and then go through all the other stuff. And you can see the Joyce Meyer stuff, John Maxwell stuff, uh, music stuff, everything that I'm doing. And, um, is on there. And so, yeah, my website is just j.com. So J U S T J A I.com. If you would like to book me for a podcast or to bring me in to speak or to coach or to help you write a song, hit up booking at just j.com. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to you for coming on and talking to us today. I have thoroughly enjoyed this very real, refreshing, hilarious, and necessary discussion. And I appreciate you once again, Jay, everybody. 